our perception is not in our best interest. And that kind of was puzzling to me because I was under the assumption that if I could control my perception, then that would be in my best interest. And exploring assumptions, I started realizing that a lot of problems in life are that we overthink things in the respect that we take on assumptions but don't think about the assumptions we're taking on. Let me explain. One of the best things that's ever happened to me is I lost all my money. And people are always ask me, well, how is it you were the CEO of the most notable sports agency in the world who came out with a sports illustrated article about 75% of all athletes go bankrupt two and a half years after they're done playing and you have a law degree from a great institution, top of your class, all these great academic things and how is it that you lost that much money? What it came down to is the basis of assumptions is that I had always made money but I made one assumption with my money. I assumed that because I had equity in property that I always would be able to borrow against it because what bank wouldn't give a secured loan, right? And in my assumption, I had not, because I was still very young, ever realized that banks could get into trouble and a bank could literally say, well, you might have $40 million in equity, but we don't believe a few years from now it's gonna be 40 million in equity or even more, even if we do believe that, we'd rather keep that money at this time because we're about to go bankrupt. And that's what occurred to me. That's what happened to me. That's how I ended up losing all my money with a variety of other things, but I was accountable for the assumptions that I made without truly doing any research or asking any help or figuring it out. And I think we live in a perception world. We can take a certain scenario and everyone have a different perception of it. That's how politics works, right? There's so many assumptions that you say, well, how can you like this person or not like this person? Well, because of assumptions that I make. If I make a simple assumption about one person, I may, you know, not care that you're five foot seven, right? And another person makes the assumption, oh, anyone that's under six feet can't play basketball. Anyone with that color skin can't play quarterback in the NFL. These are all different presumptions, right? Assumptions of perceptions. And so what I want to talk about today is let's take a step back from reality and maybe start looking at some assumptions that we're making about very important things in our lives. Let's think, be a little more interested than interesting. Let's, instead of analyzing the situation, which is just an illusion, I think what gives us a higher level or a heightened level of awareness that makes things so simple is what, assumption, uh, what assumptions am I making about that person? What assumptions am I making about the business situation? What assumptions am I making about my future or even my past? What do you think the biggest assumption that you're making in your life is? I want everyone to think about them. Raise your hand if you're willing to share a big assumption, one of the biggest assumptions in your life. Blaine. That it's going to continue. Great, because that's my biggest assumption. Tell me a little bit more about that assumption, that your life is going to continue meaning what to you? What does that mean? Okay, and that's it? That's the assumption? That's, that's I, I would say so. Okay. Now, if you don't have that assumption, if you say, I may not wake up tomorrow, would you live your life differently? Absolutely. But that is a great assumption. My assumption went even farther where I thought you were going. Think about this. My assumption is, is that I am a spiritual being, right? I'm a spiritual being having a human experience. So I believe in infinity. I believe that, and this is my belief, I please don't, I know this is a corporate environment, don't take my perception of this as truth, but I'm gonna tell you why I take this assumption. I believe that I will live forever, that this is just a human body. When this body is in the flesh wears out or whatever happens to it, my spirit will live on for infinity in, in whatever form or factor. Let me tell you why I make that assumption. Because if I'm going to live this life in this human form, if I took the other assumption that this was it, that would suck <laughs> to me. It, it, it wouldn't, like, and since I can't prove it either way, I prefer to take the more positive, optimistic perception that, man, 
I, this journey is not going to stop. And this is just one of the, you know, experiences I'm having in my spiritual journey as a human embodiment. It's a much more positive thing to do. It beats the other choice of the assumption that it's over. Another assumption of my life is that I believe that if I could empower others to empower others to be happy, happiness is the most important thing to me, which is an assumption I make, that that is the happy choice, right? If I tell you, hey, you're going to die, that creates anxiety, fear, there, there's a negative feeling. If I say, you know, you're going to live forever, that creates happiness. I want to feel good, which is why I wrote a book called what? Connected to goodness. Because my objective in life is to feel good. And I know the way to feel good, the assumption that I make, because I've learned from science that has many assumptions tied to it, that helping other people makes everyone feel good. The person receiving serotonin is released. It makes them feel good. The people giving makes them feel good. Even the people that witness kindness feel good. Think about the assumption that you're going to live forever or into infinity, at least your spirit is, about being kind to your future self. One of the favorite things you know, that my Instagram guy, Uncle Dave, says, be kind to your future self, do good deeds. Do I know whether the higher source you know, even cares if you do good deeds or even if the deeds that I'm doing that I perceive and take assumptions that they're good? You know, think about it. Under the context of an assumption, everyone here would say it would be a good deed to pick up a piece of trash. What if, right, I'm assuming that what if by picking up trash and they go into centralized units and all of those units go into dumps and, right, and what I'm actually doing is killing the earth because we find out later that we were much better off just everybody you know, putting the trash in their own backyard instead of gathering all the trash into one place because that created some sort of toxin that ended up killing everyone. Assumption, just like I'll be able to borrow against my equity. I think it's really important in an in a opportunity, a catalyst to raise your awareness by changing the way you look at things so the things you look at change. I think that we can elevate our awareness simply by looking at the assumptions first. It's much deeper. When we start thinking about assumptions, the creative juices, there's something different in my brain that happens and I see things differently that can help me towards my goal, which is to enjoy the consistent every day, persistent without quit, pursuit of my potential. I, Nick plays professional football for the Chargers. He has a potential and he has assumptions made to that potential. But we all know, you know, and any athlete would know, professional one, that you are literally one play away from, and how long have you played, Nick, since you're how old? Long time. Long time, seven, eight? More than that. More than that. Imagine, uh, you're 26 now? 27. 27. So think about that period of his life and he's under the assumption that he's one play away from never playing again. So you got to what? Maximize. Enjoy the pursuit of my potential to be the best that I can be. And then he has to take an assumption. Okay, if I'm one play away, I better prepare for what I'm going to do next. A lot of athletes don't take that assumption. They forget... It's amazing. People ask me all the time. I see new companies and apps and financial planners, and I'm sure you've been hit up by all of them, right? They, they, they all have the same pitch. I'm the guy because I love sports and I really care. I, I'm going to make sure you don't lose your money. Here's this app. Here's this firm. Here's you know this product. You know this is perfect for. It. Well, the truth is, the reason none of them matter. And the reason that you want to work with them is an emotional connection, but there are no differences of any of them. The, the point that matters is simply the guy who has an assumption that I can lose everything. He'll be fine. No matter who he uses, if he's under the assumption that I'm more uh, interested in preserving my wealth, knowing that I may not ever make this much money again, and what vehicles would give me that objective, and right? It's not hard to find guaranteed uh, you know, annuities 
that can give you growth income for the rest of your life. And it's not hard to build skills, knowledge, and desire for something else other than playing football. There's many athletes that do really well, not just being announcers or coaches. You know, Freddie Couples is one of my favorite athletes because most people don't know, you know, he is an extraordinary businessman. He makes far more money off the golf course than on the golf course. And he's in a sport that usually doesn't end with, you know, you're one swing away from your golf career ending. That's very rare. So I want you to think about the assumptions that you're making in the critical areas of your life. like your career. So let's think about who here wants to make a lot of money. Good. I do too. Michael, give me one assumption why you want to make a lot of money. So what's the assumption that you're making if you say, I want to make a lot of money. See, that's not an assumption, but he wants to make a lot of money to provide for his family. Right? You were assuming, I know, is it, you know, a $300,000 house, a million dollar house, a $10 million house. I know expectations of families that are higher and lower, depending, I have a friend in Ohio who owns his house cash. I'm like, oh wow, that's amazing. He's all, yeah, I wanna buy a new one. Oh, how, you know, his house was $25,000. That's not California, obviously. <laughs> when we start looking at the assumptions that are made by what we have a perception of, which is not necessarily in our best interest, we start exploring options. We start seeing things differently because we start having to, to do an analysis. The first one is our values. Wait a second, that doesn't make sense. I wanna make a lot of money to support my family. There's a lot of assumptions in there. When I start unraveling it, you know, how does making a lot of money affect my personal values, my experiential values, my giving values, my receiving values? What are the reasons I truly want to make a lot of money? We start exploring in our ego, is it, you know, I want to make a lot of money so my family's proud of me. Right? I'll always be able to provide the necessities for my family, but, or do I want to make a lot of money to support not just my immediate family, but extended family, because I think everything is, I'm making an assumption, like one of my assumptions is everyone is connected and everyone is relative. So when I would make a statement, I wanna make a lot of money to help a lot of people, I start with my wife and then move to my children, then move to my mom and then move to my siblings and cousins and then move to my business and then move to my community and then even the world. And I wanna make a lot of money where I can continue to help and be kind to all those people and give. There's also another assumption when we talk about supporting someone. What would that be? Because a lot of our assumptions about supporting or helping others. Well, I would say the, the assumption that that person can't support themselves. That's what, exactly online with what I was thinking. Either they can't support themselves or they want your help. Most people have a real problem with receiving. And sometimes when we try to help someone, we're offending them. That we, we're praying to their ego that we're not allowing them to, like the butterfly, to strengthen their own wings so they can break out of the cocoon and fly someday. And we're actually injuring them and changing our perceptions of assumptions that support means money. I can honestly say that my father, who missed child support payments, missed my birthday, was not financially uh, stable in my life, wasn't extremely generous to me, gave me the most support next to my mom of anyone in my life. Because through his probably unintentional guidance, he taught me how to make my own money. Because I had taken the assumption that my dad was not gonna support me. And in reverse psychology or through assumptions, through that assumption that my dad wasn't going to support me, I learned how to what? Support myself. Which is a much bigger gift than my dad leaving me millions of dollars. Because now I can help others and myself. Isn't it weird when you change your assumptions, how your reality changes? And guess what happens? Just like taking the assumption that you'll live forever takes the anxiety, fear, ego-based things away, that's the biggest benefit of doing an assumptory analysis. It starts relieving ourselves, right? It raises our awareness about 
what is true, the truth, what our potential is. It really does. It's a great exercise or a catalyst to figure things out. It also, I believe, is a great prophylactic device. It protects us. When we're starting to look at the assumptions, we can reveal and become aware of other things and, and things that people aren't aware of. So, for example, if I took some assumptions like the stability of banks, being able to lend money on a secured asset, and would have raised my awareness and started asking questions from people that had been in the mortgage industry or banking industry for 50 years and saying, hey, are there any scenarios? You know, I'm making the assumption I can always borrow against my properties. I got about $60 million in equity total. Can you think of any scenarios over history where I wouldn't be able to do that? Now, I, yeah, right. Yeah, market crash, yeah. But, right, if I start looking at the catalyst and the pro prophylactic of, of assumptions and start asking questions and asking for help for free, someone could have said, oh, no, you know, several different times in history, banks have failed. And when banks failed, they don't lend on any of the assets they own because they need them for themselves. And they have no legal responsibility to lend on them. Really? Hmm. Now I start thinking, how do I, number one, prophylactic device of assumptions, how do I protect myself? And then two, catalyst of assumptions, how do I take advantage of this? Hmm. What do banks do if they aren't going to borrow against those things? They are going to foreclose on them. Hmm. Maybe... I shouldn't be spending all my money on a lawsuit and Ferraris and big houses and golf courses and ski mountains. Maybe I should cash up and get ready to buy up all those assets that they don't want to borrow against at a discount. Putting into one of the great truths of the world is you can make money always by buying low and selling high. Or even you can make a lot of money by buying low and selling higher. That delta is the basis of trade. That delta is the easiest way to make money. What I love about Gary Vee is, you know, whatever millions he's worth, and I don't worth, I don't count other people's money. I love the fact the man still will go to a swap meet and then post shit on eBay and make a delta. I love the fact that he'll still sell his wine on an Instagram live or a T-shirt for something, right? I, I I love the fact that he understands the delta of making money. I'm going to provide you more value than I'm asking for, but there's going to be a delta there for me. At its simplest level, Jack came in to ask one of the most common questions today that I get. How do I become a sports agent? So I turned it on him to ask him what assumptions he's made about how do you think you become a sports agent? And it's always amazing how complex and convoluted those assumptions are when it's very clear how you become a sports agent. Raise your hand if you think you know how to become a sports agent. Easiest way. Jack knows now. Yeah, go ahead. What do you think? Law school. Most people would say law school. That's a convoluted way. That, that's, the, well, that's what I thought. I spent a shitload of money, went to law school, did very well, studied real hard. Thank goodness I went in New Orleans to one of the best law schools in the country, Tulane, because I did have a great time. So compensated for that. But no. How about just signing a professional athlete? In baseball, if you sign a professional baseball player, you're an agent. You don't have to take a test, right? We, 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 we think this stuff is so hard. So in essence, what's the value of being a sports agent? The guy who can sign an athlete. So everything else is going to Harvard. That gives me a more statistical chance of signing an athlete. Working for athletes first. Yeah, that gives me a statistical chance. Uh, you know, knowing the family, that gives me a, a closer chance. Knowing the athlete himself, that gives me a personal chance. Right? All, all of them get me closer, and you want to maybe have as much of that in your arsenal as possible. But in the end, we have to make the final assumption that I can sign an athlete. Because you will never be a sports agent. No matter who you work for, what law school you go to, who in the family you know, you will never be a sports agent unless you have the capability of one thing, to sign the athlete. And I'll tell you how athletes sign. The same way everybody else buys. 
Anyone want to guess? How do you buy Magro? Uh, emotions, right. People buy on emotions for logical reasons. That's why somebody's mom is a sports agent. Somebody's dad is a sports agent. Somebody's uncle's a sports agent. Someone's favorite rapper is a sports agent. I've witnessed it all. But in the end, you only sign an athlete by selling on emotion for logical reasons. Same is true almost everything when we use assumptions as a catalyst and a prophylactic. It's going to protect us and it's going to accelerate what we do. But under the context of understanding, all assumptions need as a motivator to be more interested than interesting. So what I'm trying to teach today is an extra question in your arsenal. When you feel like you have this down, when you have a big decision, make, you can't afford, right? We were more interested than interesting, but I don't want you to, you know, sit at Burger King and be like, what are my assumptions why I get the double bacon cheeseburger instead of the tenders, right? No, 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 no. Right? People take things so literally. But on the big decisions, you want to buy a house, you want to figure out your career, you want to get married, you, you want to know how much money you want to make for your career, like, the, then ask yourself, what assumptions am I making? Not only to protect yourself, as I could have from going bankrupt, but also as a catalyst to figure out how you can achieve even more towards that enjoyment of the consistent, everyday, persistent, without quit, pursuit of your potential.